I met Dr. Okusaka yesterday, and he is the chief of the Department of Hepatobiliary and Pancreatic Oncology at the National Cancer Center Hospital in Japan since 2002. He's a medical oncologist that specializes in hepatobiliary and pancreatic cancer, and he is the chief of a grant by the J Japan Agency for Medical Research and Development called the Establishment of Treatment for Biliary Tract Cancer. Welcome. Thank you very much for introduction, and thank you very much for giving me such a great opportunity today. Uh, my topic is clinical trial incorporated in translational targets. However, the previous uh, many uh, speakers already uh, mentioned about this topic, so I'm apologize say, to say uh, <laughs> there is no uh, new fresh uh, information for you. However, I'd like to share them again because this is very, very important uh, topic for all of us. So, okay. Okay, so uh, this is a very beautiful figure uh, led by the Professor Vare, uh, which present uh, uh, various uh, actional targets in biliary tract cancer. Today I'd like to uh, use this slide to introduce the clinical trial for uh, cranial carcinoma or biliary tract cancer. First, I'd like to uh, share with you uh, the trial uh, using uh, IDH12 mutation. So uh, this slide is also uh, introduced by the another uh, other uh, presenters, and uh, wild type IDH1 to convert isolate into alpha kg here. Sorry. But mutant IDH1 to convert alpha kg to the onco uh, met metrolite alpha H to HD here, and consuming AD DPH. And this uh, metabolite stimulates many several, uh, several pathways uh, which uh, induce uh, uh, carcinoma in several organs, including a biliary, tra biliary tract. So IDH12 uh, mutation uh, uh, found in uh, around uh, 5 to 20% uh, in uh, intrahepatic cranial carcinoma. And uh, as far as, as, uh, as well as I know, uh, there are three agents uh, which uh, have been investigating the uh, solid tumor, including uh, intrahepatic cranial carcinoma. And I believe uh, AG120 is the uh, only agent which has been investigated uh, to a uh, specific in the intrahepatic cranial carcinoma. And this is a result from the phase one study of AG120 uh, for patients with cranial carcinoma. 73 uh, patients were enrolled in this study, and overall, uh, uh, PR rate is 5%, and SD rate is uh, 6 uh, five, uh, 56 percent. And median progression free survival was uh, 3.8 months, and PXS uh, six months late is 68.5 percent. And then uh, they are conducting the uh, phase three trial uh, comparing AG120 and uh, placebo. And I had uh, the, uh, the US and European countries and uh, South Korea from Asia uh, were participating in this trial. And I had uh, the final result will be appeared in this, uh, in this year. And next, I'd like to uh, talk about the clinical trial uh, for FGFR2 fusion mutation. Uh, in 2014, 
uh, several basic researchers, uh, including uh, Professor Shibata and uh, colleagues from our institute, uh, reported the uh, uh, FGFR fusion mutation in intrahepatic cranial carcinoma. Uh, Professor Shibata uh, uh, showed the uh, in vivo tumor regenesis in animal models and also uh, demonstrated uh, response to uh, several FGF inhibitors in such uh, tumors. And so far, uh, there are uh, several uh, other fusion mutations in intrahepatic carcinoma which have been uh, demonstrated. And uh, around uh, 5 to uh, 20 percent uh, in, uh, in patient with intrahepatic carcinoma uh, have, have having the, uh, uh, such, uh, this uh, mutation. And uh, several uh, FGFR inhibitors have been tested in a clinical trial for solid tumor, uh, including intrahepatic cranial carcinoma. And uh, BGJ is a uh, fast agent which has been tested in uh, intrahepatic cranial carcinoma. And the response rate was around uh, 20%, and disease control rate is around uh, 70%. And median progression free survival was uh, 5.8 months. And uh, ARQ is a second agent uh, which has been investigated in the uh, clinical trial for uh, uh, intrahepatic uh, cranial carcinoma. And the uh, response was uh, 20%, and disease control rate was 18%. And median progression free, free survivors 5.7 months. And this is a result uh, from phase one to trial of pemigatinib uh, for uh, patients with solid tumors, including intrahepatic uh, carcinoma. And that's, uh, you can see here, uh, most uh, all, all of the uh, patients with intrahepatic coronary carcinoma show uh, tumor shrinkage here, and also uh, the dur durable uh, response. So uh, then conducting the uh, phase two trial of uh, this agent in patient with uh, intrahepatic coronary carcinoma. And then uh, they uh, beautifully uh, demonstrate uh, a 40% of uh, response rate and 85% uh, of disease control rate, and also the uh, 9.2 months in uh, median uh, progression free, free survival in uh, cohort for patients with FGFR2 translocations. And this is uh, another agent, another uh, FGFR2 uh, inhib uh, inhibitors, Eldafinib. And uh, they showed a uh, forty-five uh, percent of the uh, uh, overall response rate, and they also uh, demonstrate the resistant mechanism of this agent. Uh, one of the uh, PR patient with FGFR2 fusion uh, experienced the tumor shrinkage, and this uh, fusion. Array fraction degrees and was not detected at cycle uh, three and cycle six uh, with treatment, but rose with the disease uh, progression here. And analysis of post progression uh, cell free DNA showed a secondary FGF2 kinase domain mutation B564L here. And this uh, gatekeeper mutation was not detected in the baseline plasma and tumor tissue, uh, the which suggests this mutation represents a mechanism of acquired uh, resistance to FGFR inhibitions. And similar uh, phenomenon have been reported in uh, other agents, including the uh, BGJ uh, 398 uh, here. 
and uh, Professor Goyer uh, uh, de beautifully uh, demonstrated the uh, efficacy of uh, TAS-102 uh, after prior FGF inhibitor. Uh, this patient uh, with uh, FGF uh, mutation uh, showed that uh, tumor shrinkage uh, by the BGJ and then uh, showed a uh, relapse. At the time of the relapse, the several uh, new uh, mutations have been uh, detected in the cell uh, 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 circulating uh, tumor DNA and biopsy. And uh, she uh, did not uh, give up at that time, and she tried to the uh, TS1120 for this patient. And uh, sh uh, he showed a uh, uh, tumor shrinkage again. And from this uh, study, uh, we can learn uh, different uh, FG inhibitors had a different mechanism. So we have to, uh, do not have to uh, give up. Uh, this uh, uh, table showed the result of several FGF inhibitors for coronary carcinoma. Among them, uh, JNJ from the Janssen uh, showed the best response. And uh, INCB from the Insights showed the longest median progression free survival here. However, all of the trial uh, was uh, very small. Uh, small, so we need uh, to conduct more uh, trial for uh, these cancers. <laughs> Next, I'd like to uh, move on to the HER2. And HER2 expression and amplification are detected in all type of the bilirial tract cancer. And uh, I found the result of the uh, clinical trial using the two HER2 inhibitors, uh, pe peritzumab and trastuzumab for HER2 positive metastatic bilirial tract cancer. Uh, this trial is very small. However, uh, approximately one third of the patient uh, show that uh, tumor shrinkage here. So I think this is uh, one of the promising data uh, to conduct the HER2, uh, uh, to target in the HER2. And I found uh, one uh, study uh, to investigate uh, trastuzumab, sorry, in uh, how to positive bilirial tract cancer uh, from the clinical trial government. Uh, uh, they reported uh, this uh, trial uh, was initiated from uh, last year and uh, was conducted in the, uh, South Korea. So I am uh, looking forward to the final result of this trial. Uh, finally, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, one candidate for clinical trial incorporating the translation target. Uh, this topic is also <laughs> another uh, speaker has mentioned already, uh, the uh, uh, BRCA2. In our uh, nation nationwide cancer genomic screening project in Japan, uh, the, uh, approximately 5% of patients had a BRCA2 mutation. And uh, unfortunately, I could not find a clinical trial uh, using uh, uh, this uh, target. However, uh, uh, there is a retrospective study for a PAP inhibitor in patients with BRCA associated coronary carcinoma. Uh, Professor Chen uh, had already demonstrated this topic, and uh, one of the uh, patients showed very long uh, progression survival and overall survival. So, and, and then the, uh, two weeks ago, uh, the phase three trial for patients with pancreatic cancer uh, who have a, a BRCA2 inhibitor show the positive result. So I believe that the uh, uh, patient with uh, BRCA positive uh, in uh, bilirubin cancer have also have a potential to show the uh, similar result. 
So in conclusion, several clinical trials in complementing translation targets such as IDH1 2 mutation, FGR fusion mutation, and HER2 are, are currently in progress. The promise of target therapy for pediatric cancer can be fulfilled with well designed, prospective, and multi center clinical trials. Thank you very much. Incidents and uh, any any preliminary information. Uh, thank you very much for your question. Uh, unfortunately, I have no experience to uh, to conduct a clinical trial targeting the heart. And I uh, uh, found uh, several uh, papers uh, which demonstrate uh, uh, a percentage of the heart positive uh, patient in chronic carcinoma and around ten percent. Of, uh, in the uh, patient populations. And, yeah. So I think that is a very good <laughs> attract target for us. So <laughs> and I uh, uh, will initiate a clinical trial uh, using the one of the, uh, uh, the inhibitor uh, soon. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a very great uh, question. And uh, mm, yes, uh, so uh, we will try to introduce the nationwide genomic screening project in Japan. And so uh, maybe from next April, April uh, we will be able to uh, introduce such system in Japan. and. Uh, most patients who show the, who do not have the, any standard care and good performance status, uh, they can access to the, uh, such a system and uh, get the result of the uh, screening. Uh, screening. And, uh, and also we try to conduct a, a treatment for them. Uh, under the uh, public insurance. Yes, uh, and the screening system is also uh, uh, can be uh, conducted in the, under the public insurance system. So uh, such a system is accelerated to conduct a new clinical trial using such an uh, uh, attractive target, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So uh, we are uh, we have already established uh, uh, our own uh, uh, screen system uh, in Japan, and uh, we also uh, try to use the uh, American system also, and we will try to establish the nationwide uh, data. Yeah, I do have a question. So on the nationwide screening tests, I think this creates a dilemma that we also has, at least my institution where I've been to before has a similar, should we screen every patient on the first diagnosis or not? And then let me use colorectal cancer as an example. If you send out for foundation medicine when they're first diagnosed and they go on systemic chemotherapy, they're doing well two years down the road, their disease progressed. Is the data still valid uh, from two years before? Or should we rescreen? And this has always been a dilemma. I don't know how, if you do the initial screening on the first diagnosis, how you resolve this. Uh, so, uh, mm, 
So we will try to uh, target the patient who showed a uh, uh, progress from the uh, uh, standard care. So uh, um, yeah. So, but uh, that is our uh, only plan. Uh, so uh, uh, it's not uh, uh, determined yet. So uh, we will present as soon. Thank you.